Hello everyone, I'm Vikram P. Maduri here. Welcome to JET Soft Tech. And in this session, we are going to discuss about the real time project 9 on SAP ABAP. Uh, basically, we'll be developing a report program using classical basic ALB report, uh, a classical basic uh, report events. Now, this like uh, we'll be discussing first about the events and then we'll write a program on it. So, at all, if you are uh, looking out for NSA ACP trainings, you can contact us in, at info at the rate jhft.com. And if you like to, if you like to get more notifications about our new videos, you can you can subscribe to our channel youtube.com slash jhsoftech. And do not forget to click on the bell bell icon once you subscribe. Okay, the, the events, the basic report events, the classical basic report events are load of program initialization at selection screen start of selection end of selection end of top of page and end of page so we'll have uh, we have additionally we have at selection screen special uh, you know events that we have at selection screen output at selection screen on field at selection screen on value request at selection screen on help request so we are going to apply these uh, at selection screen specific events in the next coming program right now we'll write a program with the basic report events that we see, you can see here on the screen it's of tick underscore vendor data this is a classical basic report events click on this local and in this let's make use of that concept like how we have we'll first use the tables this is actually not mandatory right now the table that we are using is lf1 because we need the vendor data here so and then we'll write the types begin of st underscore lf1 and we have lfnr type lfnr this is a table. this is a field that we have here so uh, if you have a question of how, how do we get this field says like in, uh, basically we get it from the you know client requirement if at all if you have the client requirement in descriptions then you can go ahead and check from here so what i can do is like i can so we can copy these fields from here name one uh, and then we have the ort01 and all these things so then we can write it down here so we have name one type name one underscore gp because uh, that's how it has been data element has been designed let me show you again so we are we are taking the properties of this data element here what we have here so we are we are going back and uh, we are writing over zero one over zero one underscore gp LAN1 type LAN1 underscore GP. We are taking four fields end of ST underscore LFA1. This is the declaration of the structure. Then we will be declaring the internal table, type standard table of ST underscore LFA1. W underscore LFA1 type ST underscore LFA1. Now, here we have this. These are the things that we have. Select options. We'll go for S underscore left and R for left one hyphen left and R. So we have a select options. In here, we'll be introducing the initialization. In the initialization, we initialize some values of uh, uh, select options because this is something which we want to generalize. So we have low is equals to somewhere around. Uh, Say thousand, and we have s underscore lfnr high is equals to five thousand sign is equals to i. Option equal to BT. Now we'll write append s underscore lifnr. Now once it's been done, uh, let's check the output here. If you see, 
if you see the selection screen here you get this thousand and five thousand here so this is something which we have now here this is what we by default are getting it because of the initialization so for example if let's test if uh, if i comment this uh, initialization if, if i comment this initialization it doesn't work let me show you that so if i execute it everything is written but it doesn't uh, give that initialization of the values so that's the significance of initialization where we can initialize certain values and we have a collection screen wherein like we can write something like if and s underscore lfnr is less than say 500 and if you can write uh, you can maintain a message i'll be explaining about all the different types of messages that we have one just uh, on an ad hoc basis i'm creating a message class here just to show us the data go for 001 uh, i mean like please enter a value more than 500 something like that and then we just save it back and then once once if you have any value less than 500 it's going to populate that let's see that now so when we execute it and when we change this as 50 the moment we say enter and that event gets triggered Throws an error here. So I just missed this hyphen low, so I have added that hyphen low. Now it works perfectly fine. And this, I just have this. Let's say if I make this as 50 and execute this, you get this okay. And uh, we have this, uh, you know, you get you get message here saying that please enter a value more than 500. That's what we have here. So now we'll come back and write the we'll come back and write the logic for the startup selection basically in the startup selection we write uh, you know uh, select statements in atline selection we do all the screen operations whatever operations have to be done on the on the selection screen can be done here and we have the startup selection here startup selection comprises of the select statement basically even if you don't write the startup selection it works when we don't use other events basically here since we already are using other events it's mandatory for us to have the startup selection if at all if you don't write the startup selection uh, you know select statement can be misassumed as a, a part of at selection screen which should not which will have a problem so to end that selection screen we have to call the startup selection so we write the values lifnr name one or t01 land one from lfm1 to table it underscore lfa one where lifnr in s underscore lfnr so it's it's all a single line but we can also write it one below the other for our easy understanding so this is actually the you know the select statement that we have which is the most important here so once it's been done uh, the startup selection is done and the end of selection comprises of all the output statements so whatever output statement are there we have to write in end of selection so end of end of selection so in the end of selection we'll use the loop statement loop at it underscore lfa1 into w underscore lfa1 
string loop and here we have write statement w underscore lf1 hyphen lfnr f one name one party zero one land one so these are the fields that we have which we need to go ahead and uh, write in the end of selection so once it's been done if at all if you want to display anything on the top of the output then you have to go for a top of page so let's use top of page now so in the top of page we'll write write Shades of tick vendor data. So we just want to write this and uh, once it's been done, you, you can execute that and see the output. Okay, so after this, we can also write end of selection, end of end of page. End of page basically comprises of everything that we needs to be displayed at the uh, end of the no, end of the page. So write, say for example, we can write page number S Y A G N U. Then we have to. Now, if you observe this, all the events, whatever logic we have written, will be displayed, but what will happen in the what will happen in this output is like you know we will not be able to find out the end of page so we will not have the end of page at all the end of page why it will not be there is because we have not defined where the page ends so for that to happen what we need to do is we need to go ahead and define the length of the page once we define the length of the page it works we just need to remove this file Now here we have to write line count 28 of 2 or of, of say of 5. So this 5 will be empty spaces after 29 lines. Again a new page starts. So when we define the page length, the system will be able to print the uh, end of the page. So let's see that now. So now we will be able to see the end of page here. So end of page has come here. So page one, uh, you know, uh, page two, we'll get page two and all, page two, page three. So what we can do is really we can also increase the size of it and adjust the page size of our our page and then adjust it according to that and we can we can get a good output. So for example, like I'll make this as something around thirty five. Let's see it now. So you get this and uh, page down. If if I increase one more, I guess it will be adjusted fine. So I'll make it as 36 or 37. When I say page down. Should actually give you the exact one. Thirty-four. You can adjust the aesthetics later as well. So this is how we actually get this. So in say page down, exactly like you know you can get that uh, note screen. So in anyways, this is actually how we make use of that events we can adjust the according to the screen size we can adjust the number of lines and we can adjust accordingly and these are the events that we have used uh, let me let me once re 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 rewind what we have done we have used all the events for basic report uh, basic report and uh, created a report that's it for this session have a great day